child or as a teenager child, he was molested by a woman in his family. And these young girls said that when they arrived at the house, there was a woman that he trusted that was the quote unquote trainer. And he would introduce the young girls to this woman and say, she's going to teach you how to please me and how to please her. And, oh, you're a virgin. She's going to train you. And so I just think that 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 made the link for me because it's like, okay, this guy was abused by a woman and now he's using this woman to to sort of train these Absolutely. these little girls sexually Absolutely. so it's like wow like <laughs> Absolutely. sheesh and that's that's interesting and and kevin i know he was he was uh fading in and out so he he may be trying to reach us back but did you find in your research that that you were seeing a lot of those same types of patterns as you were talking to people years ago when you were trying to expose this behavior? Yeah, I just think that, um, you know, I'm listening to what I was saying. I just think that we, um, community, have got to understand there's a couple that the external racism that really has destroyed us, as y'all were talking about, in so many different ways, and has led to this kind of serious spiritual and emotional issues yeah. that get passed along like a family heirloom. And then I think the second part of it that we don't talk about is how we've all, so many of us, have internalized this behavior. Mm-hmm. In, so. Sure. Well, you know, and we, oh, we oh. I'm sorry, we we have some... Uh, but, hmm? but I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, oh, uh, I... I know we you're 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 having some challenges like we all do with our with our devices at at some point, but we have some some uh, chat room messages that we wanted to okay. uh, go to, and then uh, we were just going to take a quick break and uh, and let you get your phone straight, and then situated, yeah, and then we'll come back and and hear some of our chat room uh, banter, and uh, and we'd love to hear uh, some more of your thoughts on this, Kevin, because this is a really disturbing issue. Absolutely. Thank you. All righty. So also, before we go to break, I want to remind our callers to tune back in on our phone lines. We got our technical difficulties ironed out, so we really want to hear from you guys as well. So now we're going to go on a break, and when we come back, we'll be ready to serve some more top-shelf discussion. You're listening to Straight No Chaser. We'll be right back. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes In biology, me. I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. The path to happiness is not the easy one, but taking drugs will not make it easier. Many people got lost and end up losing their life to drugs. If you or anyone that you know is within that path, don't be afraid to seek for help. Visit www.adk.gov.my for information related to drug abuse. So, know your path. This message is brought to you by the National Anti-Drugs Agency. Where I wanted to quit, in the back of my mind, I told myself I have to quit. 
And just that day when I reached for that cigarette, I'll never forget it, with my son looking at me. And it was like a bolt of lightning hit me where I finally realized the big picture of what year after year and cigarette after cigarette had done. And I said, that's it. I'm done. I quit. Took him a whole pack, brand new pack. Took him, threw him out the window. And I don't litter, but I was, that's it. I'm done. I quit. I know it's going to kill me. It's going to be cancer. But I don't have to make it sooner than it needs to be. He, he was shocked, and he says, I really hope he made that mom. You're listening to Straight No Chaser. So let's get back to your girl MBZ, Pastor C, Thin Bad, and the Chief. people can hurt people. Let me remind the audience that you can call us at 702-425-7789 or chat live to share your thoughts. But uh, you, joining us also is, is Kevin Powell, for those of you who are just coming on board, who's been with us. And, and Kevin, we've been talking about R. Kelly and celebrities as it relates to the allegations of, of sexual assault. Now, now, why do you think it is that the, the music industry as a whole has kind of been slow to respond? We talked about them, you know, there being other instances and other folks, and this has gone on for, uh, you know, R. Kelly isn't the first uh, or the only. Uh, but why do you think that the industry is so slow to, to respond? Well, I think it's everything that you all have been talking about. We've all been talking about this, this obsession with celebrity, with fame, you know, what money does and power, money does and what it represents is a form of power to control people. There's a lot of yes people, a lot of enablers in the industry. And I think also, you know, it's a, it's a male-dominated industry. And, and honestly, and I've seen it with my own eyes, women's lives you know, are not the lives of women and girls are not valued, you know. And it's, it's always been like that. We can go back to the era of, of, of blues, jazz, rock and roll, right up to the present. This is not something that is new. I think what has shifted is that you know with music videos and 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 and, and, and social media, you even see it online. I see it on Instagram every single day. I mean, this mm-hmm. is this is just how this is a patriarchal society. And just like America was founded, quote unquote, on racism, it was also founded on this notion that that women and girls are inferior to men and boys, and therefore mm-hmm. their lives are not valuable. And if, as you all said, if there's no one that's interrupting, like you know, for me. I mean, I just want to make this very personal. It wasn't until I was 18 years old when I got to college that my life was interrupted, and I was reminded of the fact that, hey, you're an African person, you're a black person, and you need to know your history. Well, and that shifted my life significantly, you know, and I realized, hey, I need to know who I am racially, but no one ever no one ever interrupted my life for another five or six years and said, hey, young man, you need to think about your behavior vis-a-vis women and girls, you know. No, no one ever did that. There was no conversations about mm-hmm. that. And so I think that it is, it's really, really important. And this is why I do the work that I do. You know, we've got to talk about how we define manhood. You know, that's really what I'm getting at. It's like this is the question because we can get stuck on R. Kelly, but this is right. symptomatic across the board, you know, in our communities. And a lot of us will blame, you know, as we talk about, well, what about the parents? Or we'll blame girls and women. But I can't control anyone but myself. And so the question I ask myself every single day, how am I relating to women and girls. Do I treat them with respect and honor and dignity, you know, and as equals, or am I participating in a system that says that they are inferior when that's actually the opposite of even what I saw growing up? Because in my community, it was my mother, my aunts, my grandmother. I didn't have a father, you know what I mean? And, and we, that's a whole other conversation again about slavery and the devastating effects of this from generation to generation. But, you know, there's a reason why women like my mother, who's now 75 years old, still says to this day, that men are no good. Well, where did she get that from? You know what I'm saying? 
you know, and so it says that she has experienced things, mm -hmm. not just in terms of racism, you know, which she talks about all the time, but also a behavioral pattern of a lot of different types of men in the community that have given her pause to the point where she thinks none of us are any good. And so we need to think about that. And one of the things I'm clear about is that we have to redefine manhood because it's not just R. Kelly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I want to also just share uh, one of our thoughts or, or share some thoughts from our chatters. And um, the first one we have here is, I think awareness, intervention, and accountability are key. When you have been sexually abused, you're more likely to perpetuate that same behavior. As crazy as this may sound, a lot of times people don't see themselves as an abuser because of their experience, mm -hmm. especially when they are abused by a family member or a loved one. Wow. Those same people are living with this secret and not receiving the help and intervention they need and they perpetuate an ugly cycle. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And that's yes. exactly what happened in this situation. And I yes. think I think um I think that you know, one of the problems that we highlighted is also about how black women are not really valued. Our young black girls aren't really valued to the point where, you know, it takes it takes 20 years in a documentary to, to for us to get some, you know, credit for us to get some notoriety. So well, I think I I, I, I kind of I kind of disagree with that. You, and, and you think so? It, well, why here's why that? I say that, because I, I think that this this showed a a culpabil a culpability rather on on a lot of different sides. For example, we talked earlier about there were signs that were just jumping all over the place in terms of this guy was 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 keeping this little girl from her parents and they were so enamored at, at least it appears right. by the lure of stardom and fame and fortune sure. that they just said, "Well, okay." And that's that's ridiculous. Secondly, I know that um, Kevin was saying that as he was doing his 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 research and making people aware of this, when he was in his awareness campaign, people were literally ready to curse him out and fight him and not believe this. Right. And this was within the community. Right. So I can't necessarily go with the fact that this was some kind of a black or white thing. I think that there were so many dynamics that played into this nonsense that now you have all these young ladies, the old ones and the young ones, that are now scarred for life. Yeah. Because you, you can't tell me that you, as a parent, would just allow your daughter to just go with anyone. You haven't met them. You, you've never talked to them. You don't have any background information. Just because R. Kelly's people said, hey, I'm going to put you with with Mr. Jones or Miss Jones and she's going to be okay. You're like, okay, that's yeah. good. And now you're wondering why you can't find your daughter. I mean, that's true. But at the same time, if Aaliyah was white, that, that would have been a different story. And if the girl in the tape was white, that would have been a well, different story. I, I mean, well, I period. mean, but you look at Woody Allen, that's Woody right. Allen was, was, was alleged to have done all kinds of things. And that never, nothing never came of that. Uh, you look at Michael Jackson. For years, there were allegations that Michael Jackson was alleged to have, to have um, abused black and white kids, and and so and and nothing really came of that until years later. And the same pattern, uh, you know, the allegations come forward. I write a check, it goes away, and so it, it's just to me. I think that there were so many people that that were just enamored with money. Yeah. And Definitely. fame and power Absolutely. that I'm willing to uh, turn my head and allow my, my child to be hurt. But as a community, we are so enamored. Hey, man, you know, step, step, side to side. <laughs> and, and, we're, and we're going to ignore that this boy is hurting our babies. Absolutely. And I mean, it, it's ridiculous. If I could jump in for one second. Sure. This is Kevin again. I just, I, I, I always say to our, I say to people in general, I think we need to practice something I call the three C's, uh, context, compassion, then you challenge. And, and mm. I feel like uh, all of us have been laying out the context over and over again. We've talked about poverty. We've talked about celebrity culture. We've talked about a range of things, hurt people, hurt other people. That's the context of it. Mm -hmm. And then when the compassion comes in, because what we often do 
I feel uh, is, is, is really come down hard.